For more videos, visit ForTheSakeOfEducation.com All right, guys, we have uh, this diagram, which has three forces applied at the top and a distributed load applied at the bottom. And it says, if the soil exerts a trapezoidal distribution of load on the bottom of the footing, determine the intensities of W1 and W2 of this distribution to support the column loadings. All right, so let's break down the distributed load at the bottom. You know that you have two shapes. You have a triangle and a rectangle. This line over here should make it a little more obvious. You got W1 and W2 for the pressure. So, you know that the sum of the forces in the Y is equal to zero. That's the condition. You know that the rectangular force, the rectangular series load has an equivalent force at F1 right here, right in the center. And the triangular one has a equivalent force F2 at one third from the long edge of the triangle. Now, you know that you have this whole length is one plus 2.5 plus 3.5, that will be seven, I believe, yeah. Seven meters, one third, which is where F2 is being applied is equal to 2.667 actually this is 8 my bad from here to here is 8 so this is 2.667 and the rectangular force applied right in the middle which is 4 meters meters all right you know that from here to here is W1 minus W2 and from here here is W2 from here here is W2 okay so the first thing that you gotta do is you have to add uh, all the forces so I got F1 plus F2 is equal to the sum of these three forces 60 80 and 50 so 60 plus 80 is 140 plus 50 is 190 so you got 190 and the units are in kilonewtons so f1 plus f2 is equal to 190 now you know that f1 is the area of the rectangle which will be w2 times the length of the rectangle which would be 8 times w2 and f2 is the area of the triangle which is 8, which is the length of the triangle, times W1 plus W2, I'm sorry, W1 minus W2, all over 2 because it's a triangle, is equal to 190. So basically what we want to do is we want to simplify this equation, and when you simplify it, you're going to get that a w2 we're gonna distribute this is a over 2 is 4 then distribute it so you get plus 4w1 minus 4w2 is equal to 190 so when you further simplify this you're gonna get that this is equal to w1 plus w2 is equal to 47.5 kilonewtons okay so we got one equation but we still got two variables so we need to find another equation so let's do the moments you know that for a balance on the system the moments have to be equal to zero now the moments are equal to let's say the moments from here you get this distance this distance and this distance so the first force 60 create creates a moment of 60 times 1 let's assume clockwise is positive plus 80 the 80 kilonewton force creates a moment about this lever arm right here which has a length of 1 plus 2.5 which would be 3.5 plus this 50 kilonewton force creates a clockwise moment of this length all the way over here which is 1 plus 2.5 plus 3.5 which will be 7 now minus because 
the distributed load creates a counterclockwise moment going that way. So let's start with F1. F1 turns the lever arm off length right at half, which will be 4. So F1 times 4 minus F2 turns the lever arm right here, which is we found right here at 2.667, which is 8 divided by 3. So F2 times 2.667. And all that is equal to 0. So you can add all this together now. And you get 690 minus F1 times 4 minus F2 times 2.667. For F1 and F2, you can plug in this for F1 and this for F2. And you get 4 times 8W2. Actually, I further simplify this. Let me show you all the steps. Because if I skip steps, then I get a lot of questions. What did you do? Okay. So when you further distribute this, you get something like this. Um, basically, you're going to pass the 690 to the other side. So you get F1 for F1 plus 2.667 F2 is equal to 690. Now we can plug in 4 times 8W2. I plugged in this for F2 because it's the same as this. You just divide the A by the 2 already. And you get plus 2.667 times 4W1 minus 4W2 is equal to 690. Uh, you further solve this, you get 32W2 plus 10.668W1 minus 10.668W2 is equal to 690. Let me turn the page. Hopefully you're taking notes so you won't have a problem. So then you add some together. You add the uh, W2s together and you get 21.332 W2 plus 10.668 W1 is equal to 690. You're going to grab this function, this equation, and you're going to divide it by 10.668. So when you divide all the values, you get 2 W2 plus W1 is equal to 64.7. Let's multiply this by negative 1. And you get minus... 2w2 minus w1 is equal to negative 64.7. Now remember the other equation that we got, equation 1 is w2, I'm just writing it down at the bottom, plus w1 is equal to 47.5. The w1s cancel out when you add these two equations together and you get minus w2 is equal to minus 17.2, so w2 is equal to 17.2. Yay, we got W2. Now, to find W1, just plug it into any equation. You can plug it into here, just because it's closer. Or you can plug it into here, or you can plug it into here, whenever you want. W1 is going to come out to be 30.3 kilonewtons per meter. That's the unit, kilonewtons per meter. So final answer for W2, final answer for W1. Please comment below if you want me to do any problems and I'll be happy to help. Thank you.